Hi, my name is Yul Kwan, and I'm asking you to support House Resolution 121 and to stand on the side of human rights, women's rights, and global peace. During World War II, the Japanese Imperial Army enslaved 200,000 women throughout Asia and exploited them as comfort women. These girls and women were the victims of gang rape and brutal torture that resulted in death, dehumanization, and disease. Yet Japan has never taken full responsibility for this atrocity. In fact, the Prime Minister of Japan and the Japanese government are now denying that the government played any role in this crime. This is a moral outrage and a threat to human rights. House Resolution 121, proposed by Congressman Mike Honda, calls upon the Japanese government to make an unequivocal and official apology for committing this war crime. Let us bear witness to the testimonies of the survivors and stand with them for the sake of truth, reconciliation, and our humanity. Whilst running an errand for the family she was working for, Liok's son, then aged 15, was kidnapped and taken to China in the back of a truck. She was taken to a comfort station where she remained for three years. Li Oak Sun, 79, in her room at the House of Sharing. Every comfort woman has her own story, but I have a very vivid memory of my story, so I'm often invited to speak by many people around the world. The story should be told. I don't want to talk about it because it is so painful and terrible, but I have to do it to protect other women from the same thing happening again. They forced us to serve 40, 50 soldiers a day. It was too much, especially for young girls. I had no time off, even when I was on my period. After a woman refused, they cut her body with a knife. Some girls were stabbed. It was a painful experience. There was not enough food, not enough sleep, and I couldn't even kill myself. I desperately wanted to escape. Once I tried to escape, and I actually made it to a broad road, but I failed, and I was severely beaten. It wasn't a beating to warn me. Rather, they nearly beat me to death. I lost some of my hearing and some teeth. My name is Kun Ja Kim. I was born in Pyeongchang, Gangwon province in 1926. I became an orphan when I was 14, and I was placed in the home of Choi Chul Ji, a colonial police officer. As his foster child, I cooked and cleaned for Mr. Choi. I remember the day that changed my life forever. I was wearing a black skirt, a green shirt, and black shoes. It was March of 1942, and I was 16 years old. I had been sent out of the house by police officer Choi and told that I needed to go and make some money. I found a Korean man wearing a military uniform, and he told me that he would send me on an errand, and I would be paid for this errand. I followed him, and he told me to board a train, a freight car. I did not know where I was going, but I saw seven other young girls and another man in a military uniform on this freight train. A Japanese soldier with a ranking badge was waiting for us by a truck. The soldiers got on the truck, and the other girls and I were put on the back of the truck. Eventually, the truck stopped in front of a house that looked like an old inn. I was later told that the name of the town was Hunchen, China. A Japanese officer came to the house. I did not know what he was saying or what he wanted until he raped me. When I refused and fought back, he punched me in the face, and the blow split my eardrum. On a daily basis, I was raped by Japanese soldiers, and it was common to be raped. Sorry. On a daily basis, I was raped by Japanese soldiers, and it was common to be raped by 20 different soldiers a day, and on some days, it was as high as 40. If we fought or resisted the rapes, we would be punished, beaten, or stabbed by the soldiers. There were soldier overseers to make sure that we complied, and if we resisted, they would punish us. My body is forever marked and scarred with those beatings, and in some cases, stabbings with a knife. Eventually, we were moved to the front lines of the war. The soldiers on the front lines believed that they were going to die, so they acted out their fears and stress on us by being more violent than one can imagine.